So today we'll be talking about push down automata. And a push down automaton or a PDA is a recognizer for what kind of languages do you think? For context free languages. So we studied a, a DFA and an NFA. And these recognize what kind of languages? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm? Regular. Regular languages. And uh, push down automata, or more specifically, non deterministic push down automata, recognize. Uh, NFAs and DFAs recognize and push down automata recognize context free languages. Now, didn't we study something for recognizing context free languages? So we spent the, uh, the past few lectures studying something that recognizes context-free languages. And what's that? What was that? Yeah, so the, the, the parsing algorithms that we have studied, we have studied LL1 parsing. LL1 parsing, or an LL1 parser. An LL1 parser uh, recognizes does it recognize any context-free language? No. It only recognizes a subset of context-free languages, which is the LL1 subset. So remember this. You have context-free languages, and one subset of it is LL1, which is the set of languages recognized by LL1 uh, parsers. And then a subset of this is regular languages. So regular are the easiest. And then there are pa other parsing techniques that we talked about, but we didn't study. We mentioned what? We mentioned LR1, the LR1 parsing technique, which recognizes a larger set or a, uh, a bigger subset of context free languages than an LL1 does. Okay. So. An LL1 parser, in fact, you know, the LL1 parsing technique can be implemented using what we call a recursive descent parser. Reserve recursive descent parser. And recursive descent parsing, uh, if, a, if a grammar is LL1, you can do it using recursive descent parsing. And it's very much, you know, the algorithm that we described uh, in the previous lecture. So you start with the start variable. And then you decide on a, if you only have one substitution, you do that one substitution, right? You don't have any decision to make. So if you have one substitution only, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, AX, for example, that's the only option that you have, then you do that AX. But then, if x is either you know y or z now you have to decide whether to substitute y or z for x and this is done using what by how do we decide whether to substitute y or z yeah by looking at the next symbol in the input string and based on the next symbol in the input string if the grammar satisfies the ll1 property which is that there is no intersection between the first plus set of this and the first plus set of that, these two first plus sets. If there is no intersection, then we can deterministically decide whether to substitute a Y or a Z. And we can keep going. So in this case, it could be you know, the right substitution is an X, is a, um, is a Z. And then you know, Z will have some its own definitions, maybe A, B, C, and then you substitute A, B, C. And so you, uh, 
you know, you can keep doing this if the grammar is LL1 or if there is only one valid option. Now, I'm not going to describe the details of uh, recursive descent parsing, but there is a recorded lecture on recursive descent parsing in the compiler class. So you can find that on uh, online. Uh, uh, there is a recorde recorded lecture on recursive descent parsing. Parsing, You can look at that if you are interested. But we are not going to emphasize, we're not going to focus on this in this course. That's something that we focus on in the compilers course. But if you are interested, you can you can take a look at that uh, lecture, that recorded lecture. Okay, so so parsers are recognizers for context-free languages. Uh, so what are then what are push-down automata? Push down, push down automata are can recognize context-free languages. In fact, it can be proven that a non-deterministic push-down automaton can recognize any context-free language. But as we will see, the push-down automaton you know, it tends to be more theoretical. So it's the theoretical model for uh, recognizing a context-free language. Parsers are practical algorithms for recognizing uh, certain uh, context-free languages, not all, not all context-free languages. So the, the pars a parser is a practical recognizer of certain context-free languages. The push-down automaton that we are about to study today is the theoretical model, and there is much in common you know, between the theoretical model and the practical parsing algorithm. Uh, as we will see, you know, the one of the uh, one of the common features is the stack. So, a non-deterministic finite automaton, uh, 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 a non-deterministic push-down automaton, is basically like a, a non-deterministic finite automaton, but with a stack. So you can think of a non-deterministic uh, push-down automaton as a non-deterministic finite automaton with a stack. Now, what's the stack? The stack is memory. So the stack adds memory to the uh, finite automaton. And adding memory will make it more powerful. Remember that finite automata fail to, uh, to recognize the language A N B N. Finite automata fail to recognize this language because they don't have the memory. They can't remember that they can't remember the number of A's and match it with the number of B's. But now we will see that by adding a stack to an undeterministic finite automaton and making it a, a push-down automaton, we will be able to uh, to recognize languages like this. So the idea is, is very simple. So if you have a string like this, A, A, B, B, what you would do is using this stack, now you have memory, right? Stack gives you memory, makes this automaton uh, more powerful because now it can remember. So it's going to push the A on the stack, then it's going to push the A again on the stack, and then it's going to, uh, when, it when it gets to the Bs, it will start popping off the stack. So it, for every B, I must pop an A. And if the number of A's popped is not equal to the number of B's pushed, then the string does not belong to the language. Or in, in other words, in order for the string to belong to the language, the number of A's that you pop off the stack must be equal to the number of B's that you read in the input string. So this is, this is the idea. Now let's, let's write a, uh, a non-deterministic push-down automaton for this language. Now before we, uh, uh, before we draw the non-deterministic uh, finite automaton for this language, uh, let's talk about, let's see the formal description or what kind of 
uh, what kind of transitions we have in uh, a push down automata. So in uh, a push down automaton, is a six tube. So now we are adding one more element, uh, Q sigma, just like the NFA. And then we will add another alphabet, which is gamma. Gamma is the alphabet that can appear on the stack, which is not necessarily the same alphabet that you uh, um, the alphabet of the input. So sigma is the alphabet of the input. Gamma is the alphabet on the stack of the stack alphabet. And then you have a delta and you have a start state and you have a set of final states. So all of these are defined. The only thing that we are adding is this. So gamma is the stack alphabet. And sigma is the input <coughs> alphabet. Now Q, delta, QS, and F are the same as finite automata. So Q is, what's Q? Set of states, right? Delta is transition function. QS, start state, F, set of final states. So these are all the same as the finite automaton. The only thing that we are adding is a new alphabet for the stack. Okay, now the transition function is interesting. For the transition function for a push down automaton is gonna have a third component in the input uh, or in, uh, in its domain. So, uh, for finite automata, for NFAs, for an NFA, I can have delta is from delta of a state and an input symbol takes you to a set of states, right? So state symbol takes you to set of states. But this is for an NFA, but for a, uh, a pushdown automaton, delta will have three components in it. So you'll have Q, which is the current state, X, which is the symbol in the input, and Y, which is the top of the stack. Okay, so now we are adding Y. So Q is just the current state. X is the next input symbol, just like NFAs. The thing that we are adding is this Y, which is the top of the stack. And this takes you to set of, not states, but set of state and stack symbol pairs. Set of uh, pairs <coughs> of uh, state uh, stack symbol pair stack symbol sorry we will see this with a concrete example <laughs> okay so delta is going to go from q times sigma sub epsilon like an nfa cross gamma sub epsilon to the power set of q and gamma sub epsilon. So again, we are adding the top of the stack to the picture. I know that it, uh, you know, this is the abstract. It, it, uh, I know that it uh, doesn't make sense so far, but when you see the concrete example, it will all make sense. Okay, so I promise that when we show the concrete example, all of this will make 
uh, a lot more sense. But I just wanted to make it clear that the transition has the top of the stack in it. So let's do uh, an undeterministic pushdown automaton for our famous non-regular language for L equals a n b n n greater than or equal to zero. So we'll have a start state. Now, uh, is the start state an accept state or not for this language? Does the empty string belong to the language? Yes, it does. So the start state is an accept state. Then, now this is something unusual that we're not familiar with. We will do some initialization, some initialization of the stack. And initializing, why would we, why do we want to initialize the stack? To put a certain symbol that doesn't belong to the input alphabet so that we know if the stack is empty or not. So if when, uh, you know, we were going to put A's on this stack. Uh, now when we push, when we pop the A's, we want to know when the stack becomes empty. And we know that we can do that using a symbol that does not belong to the sigma. You know, a symbol that, uh, you know, uh, a symbol that does not belong to the input alphabet, like dollar sign, to mark the top of the stack. So what we do is the following. Initially, we put a dollar sign which means empty stack. Empty stack. Then, when we push, when we push an A, we will have this. The A is at the top, and then this is the dollar sign. Then when we push a B, uh, sorry, we will, in this example, we will only push A's. So if we push another A, we'll have this, A, A, and then dollar sign. Now what's, why is this dollar sign useful? It's useful because when we pop, we pop the A, and then we pop the other A. After popping two A's, we know that the top of the stack must be a dollar sign, indicating that the stack is now empty again. So how do we initialize it? We initialize it with Epsilon, Epsilon goes to a dollar sign. What does this mean? So these transitions, now we are used to having only one, uh, one symbol on the edge, on each, or on each edge in the NFA. In the pushdown automaton, we have three symbols. This symbol is the input symbol, and in this case it's epsilon. This is uh, the top of the stack. This is what we change the top of the stack to. So, uh, okay, so let me put it in general. The transition would be like this. X, Y goes to Z, where X is input symbol, which can be Epsilon, meaning reading nothing. Y is top of the stack. Uh, to be changed. And the Z is what to change the top of the stack to what to change the top of the stack to. So in fact, whenever you have epsilon here, this is going to be a push. And whenever you, you have a symbol goes to an epsilon, that's a pop. So I'm going to write it. Uh, OK, let me write it here. So when you have x, uh, I don't need this. 
So let me write it here. When you have <coughs> x epsilon goes to y, this is equivalent to read x from the input and push y on the stack. That's what it means. Read x from the input and push y on the stack. This, if you have something like this, x, uh, y, epsilon, this is read x from the input and pop y of the stack. So what if the top of the stack is not y, then we cannot apply this transition. So basically this is a transition, this is a transition that we can apply if the next symbol is x, if we read x from the input, and if the top of the stack is y. This is a transition that we can apply if the next input is x, and we don't care what the top of the stack is, because we're going to push a y on top of the stack. So epsilon goes to y, this is a push. y goes to epsilon uh, is a pop. Now, so here what are we doing? Pushing dollar sign, right? Now when we push dollar sign, we're, we're, we have initialized our stack. Now this is our state one. Now what should we do to, re to recognize a string of this language? What, what do we expect the next symbol to be? Now the next symbol that we expect here is A or B? A. So if we have an A, we are in this state reading A's. So this state is going to be the state for reading A's and pushing them. So can you tell me what the transition should be? The input symbol is A. And then I push A what? No, I push an A. So I push an A. So this is going to be epsilon. And this is an A. So this is push an A. Push A. And as long as I'm reading A's, I'm pushing A's. Then, when do you think the transition, I will go to a, a different state when I see a B. So when I get a B, what should I do? Pop a what? Pop an A or pop a B? Pop an A, because that's what I have on the stack. Pop an A. And then I go to this state, Q2, in which I keep popping A's. <laughs> as long as I'm reading B's. So as long as I'm reading B's, so read an B, pop an A. So what you are popping is different from what you are reading. So read a B, pop an A. Then what should happen? What should now take me to an accept state? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When I, when I get to a dollar sign, which means that the number of A's that I popped is equal to the number of A's that I pushed, then I will hit a dollar sign. And in that case, that dollar sign should take me to an accept state. So what, uh, what should be the transition in that case? Will I read any symbols from the input? So then that's an epsilon for the input. Will I push or pop? Yeah, and I need to pop a what? Dollar sign and pop it. Okay. Now to convince you that this works, let's, uh, 
you know, let's see what happens with, you know, first let's see what happens with uh, when we pass a string that belongs to the language, then we'll see some strings that do not belong to the language to show you how this works, how it would reject a string that doesn't belong to the language. Okay, so if I have a string that belongs to the language, like A, A, B, B, what will happen? So this is going to do the initialization. The initialization will do what? It will just put dollar sign up top. So now I'm here. Now I get an A. It says when you get an A, push an A. So pushing an A will put me in, sorry, A and dollar sign. Then I will get a second A and I will be in this state, dollar sign. Now in this state, now if I keep, clearly if I keep getting A's, I will keep pushing A's. But for this particular string, I'm here, right? I have read two A's, now I'm here. So the B will take me to, so remember that this is the input, this is the top of the stack. This is the input, this is the top of the stack. So it says, whenever you read an A, B from the input, pop an A of the stack. So this is gonna, reading a B will cause popping an A. Read a B, pop an A. So popping an A will put me in this state. Again, read a B, pop an A. Let me write it here. Read a, a B. Okay, read B, pop A. I didn't want to put read A, B. Confusing. But read B, pop A. Okay, then here, what will happen again? You read another B, and you pop another A, and you get a dollar sign. Now, what this means is that the only way you can uh, go to an accept state is if, you, if the top of the stack is a dollar sign. So if you have nothing in the input, so this is read nothing, pop dollar sign. So this is what you read read nothing, pop dollar sign. Okay. So if you read nothing and dollar sign, you proceed to an accept state. Now let's take three strings that do not belong to the language. Now what if we have the string, <coughs> um, you know, A, A, B, B, B. If, what if we have three Bs? What will happen? So two A's will put you here. Then you pop. Uh, then you pop two. B, you know, with, you read two B's and you pop. So you are now in this state. So now you are here. You are here. But the next symbol is. What's the next symbol? You are here, right? Yeah. After popping these. So you get to this state, but the next symbol in the string is a B, right? And this is a B, it, it tells you B, you cannot apply this at all because it says B and pop an A, but I don't have an A to pop. So I cannot apply this. So this says, read a B, pop an A. But at this point, I, I don't have any more Bs, uh, any more A's to pop. So I cannot apply this. Okay, can I apply this? No. If, you are, if I apply this, I will accept this bad string. Why can't I apply this? It says, read nothing. Right? So you can apply this by reading nothing. Right? But you have a B. So you have a B and a dollar sign. So at this point, the next symbol is a B. So you don't have something like B dollar sign. 
you don't have a transition so a transition is valid if the input if the input symbol matches this and the top of the stack matches this so I don't have anything that matches uh, you know B in the input and top of the stack is dollar sign okay so this is this matches the input but it doesn't match the top of the stack this matches the top of the stack but it doesn't match the input I have to match both I have to have something like B dollar sign go to something so here BBB will not work what about this if we have fewer B's what will happen if I have fewer B's the first B will put me here right now I have at the input I have what nothing right and the top of the stack is an A I don't have a transition for input is nothing top of the stack is A right, so I have input is nothing but top of the stack is dollar sign I have input is B but top of the stack is A I don't have you know the pair of input the pair of input and top of the stack does not match any of these two transitions again the whole pair must match <coughs> and this does not match so I'm gonna reject this string now what if I have something like this a A B A so uh, the B will put me here then what what will happen yeah. there is no again there is no transition that matches input is A and top of the stack is uh, is A so again you have to have a matching pair of input and top of the stack in order to take that transition so again when you don't have a transition it's it's like an nfa no transition is like going to a trap state which is a reject if you don't have any transition for the current input then that's a reject so again it will reject this any question